So last week, The Last of Us really impressed me. And obviously, all eyes are now on episode two this week. All I'm going to say is, this show's really growing on me. You see what I did there? That's the last of the jokes. Let's take a look after. Scroll. <laughs> Bonjour. It's episode two, I've got to say, has followed on from episode one with the level with the level of technical ability, acting ability, storytelling ability in, in an episodic format. I, I just really do think these two these two episodes for a non non gamer by the way, non gamer. And I said it last week, but if you're just tuning in now, I am a non-gamer. So the opening in uh, Jakarta, in Indonesia, I'm loving this, I'm, I'm loving that format. So first episode, we had the 1960s um, uh, news uh, item about the fungus and stuff, going ha ha ha, as if that could ever happen. This week is... Like a, um, not like a flashback, but back in you know twenty years previously, when the, the the contagion first started spreading, and I love those, I love those tidbits of information we're getting for, from you know pre-apocalypse, like the lead up to it, because obviously all of this story is set post-apocalypse, so I'm finding that a nice, um, a nice sorbet before the main course, as it were, of just giving us, because this is like this. This week is a three a three hander from An Anatole, Pedro Pascal, and oh bless her, I can't remember her name, but Ellie, the actress that plays Ellie, and she is, I think she's proven herself to be a really great actress. To be fair, um, I don't think in Game of Thrones she was really given a lot to stretch her chops, her acting chops with, but here she certainly is because it's just just the three of them. It's just the three of them, all way, all the way through, and I am liking everything they're doing with Ellie um, and Joel. I really do like the way the script is is spot on, and yes, she is snarky, and yes, she has got the ump, and they are oh, for me, they are just a millimeter under making her uh, her character unlikable, but they're just about getting away with it. Just about because she comes back at him, you know. Then he gets a he, he gets a when there's just some moments, you know. He gets a, a, a couple of shots in. She gets a couple of shots in with all the snarky comments. Uh, so so I really like it. And but anyway, back to Jakarta. I hope that they do that every week. Actually, I hope that they give us a little snippet of the of the overarching story of the whole thing. You know, the global outlook of it. Because I find that very interesting aspect of this story and I know that I compared this with Walking Dead this this was my put this was my frame of reference for, for coming into this show was is it going to be as good as Walking Dead it's proving a very very worthy uh, successor to certainly for the first few series of Walking Dead but this isn't really zombies this is the the, the, the bit I like this isn't really zombies as, as we've come to know and love them. And this week, we did see, like though I, I think they're called the clickers, forgive me if that's wrong, and it's I, I don't know where I've picked that up, maybe in a bit of research and stuff. But like I say, I didn't play the game. But the fact that they, you know, the fungus was all over there, and, and that and that scene that they did in the museum, where it was the chaos of the sudden charge, and and unlike the Walking Dead. Not every shot, because they're both armed, not every shot was a headshot. In in the chaos of it all and the, and the confusion, and I really liked that. That added another sense of, oh my God, now I'm on the floor, I've lost my gun, now he's chasing me, I've got to be quiet. And this episode was really tense. Two thirds of this, they built the tension up nice. The long shot of the um, the infected, just moving the way the sun, I love that. I don't know if that was from the game, that might have been a bit from the game, but 
what a great idea the fact that they're reacting to some to, to, to the sunlight and they was somehow rolling rolling over or rolling around to protect them so something like that. but as the clouds as the sun through the clouds was 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 just changing the shape of the light I thought it was very nicely done this week though as much as i'm saying what a glorious free hander that was uh this week for, for all the actors involved this one is owned by the production designers and and the designers in general because it is an it is absolutely be a beautiful setting in its bru brutal glory and and you, you know with, with the, the the bomb craters which they allude to at the beginning of the episode and the fact that everything's overgrown and i was wondering in some of the pictures i was seeing before this episode i was wondering why there was buildings and i thought well, they don't Buildings don't rot and fall over. Get it now, I get it. Show me a bomb crater. I love the way we're still getting information about this fungus and he, before they go into the museum and he's testing it and it's dry and it's dead. Um, I really am. And this is what does set it apart from The Walking Dead the, and, and how they describe it. And again, a little bit of exposition, explaining it to the girl, because she's never been outside, about how the mycelium is underneath the ground and one if you're and you know just that little bit of exposition sets up the ending and what a glorious ending it was you know you've got this tense build-up showing us everything we needed to see for, to, to make not only give us more information about this world that we've got another six episodes I think is it eight or nine maybe and um, it just gives us everything we need to enjoy this show on, on every level like I say this you know that museum that museum scene was so nicely done with them two clickers and it, it was it was almost like a cross between the walking dead and a quiet place in a way in points and i mean that in the highest praise that that's that's fine that's fine by me you're going to mix walking dead and, and a quiet place every week i'm your man um so and then from there you know just their, their little obstacles along the way and that little bit of exposition and obviously them questioning her about what's going on with her arm and then at the end so we've got two episodes for two poor old joel ain't had much luck has he i can't say it was um a shocking twist for me when he was bandaging up her ankle i thought oh is that and obviously I know I've never seen a clip of either the game or this show with Anna Torb in it. So, and I, but I only noticed this week she's down a special guest. So maybe you lot might be ahead of me on, the, well, particularly the game as I think, because I, I, I was suspecting it. She's got to get it at some point. Um, and again, nicely revealed, just, just poignantly done. And at some point I was thinking, oh no, are they going to kiss? And I thought, oh, I wouldn't fancy kissing someone who's infected having seen all the... <laughs> but no, they kept their... They kept their relationship as has been shown. And even like they said at the beginning of this episode, you, you know, uh, when uh, Ellie's asking him questions. So that was just, just a really nicely done. I've got to admit, I... If, if I'm going to really, really nitpick, because this, I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I'll get on to my nitpicking in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of the naysayers on YouTube, and there's loads of them, there's loads of them, are going to say, what a boring episode this was, not a lot happened, oh, there's one little fight scene in the museum, and I'll get on with it. Because I think, for me, this was a really taut 40 minutes of of an episode and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I, I was literally thinking oh what's going to happen next like, you know in the hotel when she's pushing the trolley having a laugh in that and that is the build up they, they, was proper, they proper teased me with that one where the trolley moves and the, the skeleton falls down in the water and you was kind of expecting it because it's all too jolly that is the setup that is what as an audience we're expecting but I love the way they didn't quite deliver on it it was like, and it wasn't a oh my god moment. You know, it didn't fall and splash and she fell back in the water. It was just a quick aside, but nevertheless, it was all building that tension up. And the sound design, talking about production design, the sound design, when that they was going up through that museum and you could hear the creaking 
and as almost as if something was walking around. And the foresight to have that ceiling falling down to create that layer of dust in the following scene that added to the creepiness of it, that let the, the, the torchlight cut through the layer of dust. I just thought, yes, this is how you do it. This, this is literally how you do it. You know, what can, they've obviously all had their little, their, all their little chat and the lighting got blokes there and the director and they're all having a chat. Yeah, we've got to think of some way, that if we can get a bit of smoke in here and we can have the torch and we can have a bit of light on the, oh, whatever it is they needed to do. Was, was spot on and I, I do I'm still am enjoying I don't know whether they're going to overuse it so just to get onto my cut just my couple of little nitpicks I am enjoying the way they leave um the zombies I'm going to just call them zombies the zombies out of focus like right at the end when they're all running in and oh what's the name he's, he's has got the lighter and she's trying to flick it which is an age old which is an age old uh, age old tool of suspense when you've got the was and she's flicking it flicking it flicking it and they're all coming in but they're all out of focus and, and just one now i know that obviously saves on the budget don't get me wrong i get it and there was i think there was an instance earlier on in this episode where they used it and i did love them using it last week with the old granny in the background but my little tiny nitpick is that i hope they don't overuse uh, overdo that um, because it's a bit like when o uh, slow motion is uh, is overused in, in, in films and it just gets a little bit samey. Uh, so I hope they don't... Well, you know, once an episode is fine, I, I suppose. But I'm just... And, I, and like I say, I really am nitpicking here. Really nitpicking just to, to try and balance out my gushing, to be fair. And the only other thing was the odd... The odd CGI scene, like I say, this production design and the design in general of this world building is gorgeous. I'm, I'm loving the fact that, that, that it's, it's nature's taking over and I really love it. And it, and it is, it's spot on all the way through where they've, they've created these designs, make sense all the way through that feeling of what's happened. Nothing is different as they move through all these different buildings and through these city streets. It really did have a look and a feel that it is all in one. It didn't feel like, oh my God, they've gone into a studio to film the internal scenes. Oh, now they're back outside, they're, they're, you know, they're on location and they're adding a bit of green screening, whatever. The whole thing felt as if they were all in one place, moving off the street, through the buildings. I, I, I think, but just, just only very briefly, there was the odd CGI scene that just, you could just tell. But I'll tell you what, other than that, I mean, and it didn't spoil it one iota because we all know that it's a world that doesn't exist, and I think our brains, in a way, are kind of advancing quicker than the technology can can deliver it. But nevertheless, I am so with two episodes in. Yeah, I will say people could, could accuse this of, of of being a filler. Then. If, if you want to listen to them, listen to them. But it, this wasn't filler at all. It, this was jam-packed with tension, more world building, certainly more character building between our two main protagonists, uh, Joel um, and Ellie. And then, obviously, the a nice big explosion at the end. What more can you ask for? So, until next week, I will leave it there, and I will bid you adios.